good afternoon to all of you how many of this instruction is okay good afternoon everyone so today i'll be starting with the poem okay yes i'll be starting with the poem a thing of beauty a thing of beauty by john kits so at first you have to know about the okay yes hmm okay page number okay this is page number 98 a thing of beauty it is in page number 98 from your english textbook okay from your english textbook it is from your page number 98 okay so today i will be explaining you the half of the poem i'll be explaining you so we are going to read about the famous poem thing of beauty composed by john keats so john keats as we know that he was a british romantic poet okay he was a british romantic poet john keats he was born in london in the year 1795 and he died in the year 1821 in rome at the age of at a young age of 25 years okay due to his illness so we have to know about the famous poet john keats so he was a british romantic poet and uh, he was famous in his lyrical poem okay which is known as odes o d e s odes okay the famous odes okay so ode is actually a lyrical poem it is meant for uh, some particular subject and his poetry is characterized by sensual imagery you can get many imageries in his poetry okay so his poetry is characterized by many sensual imagery and the most important one we can get is that is ode ode is actually a lyrical poem it is meant for some particular subject ode is a lyrical poem which is meant for some particular subject so john keats is very famous for his odes ode to a nightingale ode to autumn okay next uh we will get uh, a uh synopsis about uh, at first we will read about a synopsis about thing of beauty so what is the background of the poem okay so let's start a thing of beauty this poem is actually an excerpt taken from his poem endymion okay a poetic romance what is the name endymion okay endymion a poetic romance okay so this poem is taken from a thing of beauty it is an excerpt taken from his famous work john keats famous work endymion a poetic romance okay endymion a poetic romance okay now i will tell you about the background of a poem this poem is taken from greek mythology okay this poem is based on greek mythology or you can say greek legend okay in which endymion i have written the name endymion okay endymion is a beautiful young shepherd and he fell in love with moon goddess 
that we call them Dinah. Dinah is the moon goddess. Okay, so he fell in love with uh, Cynthia. You can say you can yeah, have this name in your book also, moon goddess. But he is well known as Dinah. Okay, Dinah is actually the moon goddess. So Endymion fell in love with the moon goddess. Dinah and Endymion used to live on Mount Latmos. Okay, he used to live on Mount Latmos, and he fell in love with goddess Dinah, and uh, she is also known as Moon Goddess. And you can see in Greek mythology, you can see that her name is also known as Cynthia. C y n t h i a. So what happened? this enchanted youth so this young man he started to find out goddess diana and he wandered throughout the forest down under the sea in search of moon goddess diana so he fell in love and uh, he started to find out he was wandering through the forest under the sea in the earth uh, and while he was wandering over there he fell in love with an earthly maiden he fell in love with an earthly maiden who later turns to be diana who later turns to be diana okay diana herself so what happened so endymion he sa he started to fell in love started to fall in love with uh first moon goddess diana then he started to find out here and there he was roaming endymion was roaming here and there throughout the forest under the sea to find out her love and he met with an earthly maiden he started to fall in love with him after that at last he find out he found that he actually that earthly maiden was Diana herself. So this was the background of this poem, a thing of beauty. Have you understood this part? The background is it clear, or I will repeat it once again. The background is it clear, or I will repeat it once again. Hello. Shall I repeat it once again? Okay, 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 okay. So let's start with the poem. Okay. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. So the poet says that beauty stays forever. It never fades away with the ravages of time. Okay. The line means a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. increases so the poet says that beauty stays forever it is eternal it never fades away with the passage of time with the ravages of time rather it increases with the passing time beauty increases with the passing time you can see the line it's given its loveliness increases that means the loveliness of beauty okay the loveliness of beauty it increases with the passage of time it will never pass into nothingness so you can see the perception of the poet regarding beauty is that it never goes off with the passing time rather it beautifies more and more that means that beauty it never fades away with time rather it beautifies more and more but will keep a bower quiet for us bower means a steady place under the tree a steady place under the tree is called bower so pass into nothingness but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing so here the poet says for the poet beauty is just like a beautiful steady tree 
under who said all the creatures used to sleep peacefully and enjoy good health so beauty is just like the said under the tree where all the creatures they can sleep peacefully and enjoy their good health so a beautiful thing is just like a shady shelter any beautiful thing is just like a shady shelter which gives us sleep full of sweet dreams good health and relaxation so this are uh, this are uh, the explanation of the first four lines up to breathing any question up to this any question any line if you have not understood then ask me any problem up to this after explaining eight lines then i will tell you all the poetic devices used here any question from this four lines yes i have started with a thing and i have ended with quiet breathing you can see the line starts with uh, a thing then it ends with quiet breathing you can see that there is a full stop after the fifth line so this is known as enjambment e n j a m b m e n t this is known as enjambment the continuation of the line when a line continues up to two to three consecutive lines then you can get the full stop you can say that this is an example of enjambment e n j a m b m e n t i'm writing in the board any question if you are having then ask me this is known as enjambment this is known as enjambment so the line starts then it continues up to first fourth uh, first second third fourth you can you can see that in the fifth line you can you have got the full stop after quiet breathing so this continuation of the line in a poem is called enjambment kindly mute your microphone anyone has unmuted it i'm getting the sound so mute your microphone yes so any question up to this any question anybody have you understood the first fifth line you have understood or not just clear it to me because you have to understand this line this every line is very very important for you you have to understand it because it is kids poem is very tough to understand what the poet is reflecting from each and every line is very difficult to understand so better you can ask me if any question others others okay so i am proceeding therefore on every morrow morrow means actually we know morrow means morning but here it indicates the following day each and every day okay so therefore on every morrow are we breathing a flowery band to bind us to the earth so the poet says that every following day it is the beauty which fills us the spirit to live okay which enhances us which boost us to live in this art okay so all the materialistic pleasure of this art which binds us to this place okay the beauty means here all the things all the attractions which bind us to this art so here are reading a flowery band means all the good things all the materialistic pleasure it just trapped us in this place okay therefore on every morning are we breathing a 
flowery band reading means here surrounded or encircled so we are encircled we are surrounded by many beautiful things which insist us which help us which boost us to live our life very smoothly in this earth spite of despondence despondence means depressed of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made of our our searching so it is the beauty which builds the desire in us okay so the poet wants to say it is the beauty which builds the desire in us to live though there are sad moments cruel people around us so we have to understand though there though there are cruel pe people are there though there are many uh, sad moments around us but still there are beauty which insist us which builds the desire in us to live in this earth okay so spite of despondence or spy in spite of any depressed moment any sad moments beauty helps us insists us boost us to live in this planet yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirits pall means sadness so here you can see of all noble natures of the gloomy days of unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching so here the poet wants to say that without beauty the earth will be full of cruel people sad and gloomy moments so without beauty we will be futile our life will be futile why because the earth will be then full of cruel people sad and gloomy moments so this is the meaning of this line yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirit so this negative things the negative moments our sadness cruel people this will be washed away if the positive vibes are present in our life the positive vibes is uh just resemble to all the beautiful things on our, in our art so all the beautiful things insisted us to live our livelihood very peacefully so it is the beauty which is created by god so who created this beauty this is an abstract thing okay so beauty which is created by god which helps us to remove all the sadness from our heart you can see the line is given yes in spite of all in spite of all means in spite of cruel people their activities sad moments sad and gloomy moments in spite of all this in spite of all the negative activities or the moments this beauty used to remove all the sadness moves away the pall pall means p a w l pall means sadness from our dark spirit so if we are sad this is the beauty which is created by us which help us to lead our life so if beauty will be not there then we cannot live our life smoothly so up to this i have explained any question any question up to this any question any question just go through it and tell me because it's really difficult to understand the romantic poets and their lines any question from your side okay now i will explain you up to this i have given you the explanation 
in my next class i will explain the next part but up to this i will give you all the explanation about the poetic devices used here first poetic devices device i have told that is enjambment enjambment is the continuation of line then you can get the punctuation full stop okay next next you can see that is uh bower quite bower quite bower i have already said you you can get in the fourth line bower okay that means a shady place under the tree is called bower so a bower quite this is an example of metaphor this is an example of metaphor where the calmness of the bower is compared to the coming effect of the surroundings okay the calmness of the bower is compared with the coming effect of the beauty of the beautiful things okay so this is an example of this is an example of metaphor okay bower quite this is an example of metaphor next you can get in the fourth line last word sleep and again in the next line sweet sleep sweet so both starts with consonant sound s this is the continuation of the fifth line so sleep and sweet you can say that this two words starting with s sound that is consonant sound so this is an example of instance of alliteration okay this is an example of alliteration okay next next is reading a flowery band reading a flowery band so a flowery band is actually all the materialistic pleasure so a flowery band is also an instance of metaphor okay a flowery band indicates all the materialistic pleasures of our life which binds us to the earth otherwise we cannot able to survive in this planet because there are many things many negative things are there only if as if only the beautiful things are present that's why it insist us to lead our life instead or uh, instead of the presence of those negative things so again you can get that metaphor of flowery band this is also an example of metaphor next you can get uh, after flowery band uh, next line after the next line starting with of noble nature gloomy days of all the unhealthy so noble nature noble nature okay again starting with n sound again starting with n sound noble n nature n sound again this is an example of alliteration okay again you can get one another alliteration is some sep some sep this is in 12th line you can get some sep this is also an example of alliteration this is also an example of alliteration next another device another poetic device is used here you can get this line starting with of noble nature of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways see both the lines both the consecutive lines are starting with of both the consecutive lines are starting with of so this is also an example of another poetic device named anaphora named anaphora i'm writing down in the board this is an another example of anaphora okay you can get the same word if you can get the same word in the consecutive lines of the poem the same word you can get the consecutive lines of the poem this is known as anaphora so up to this i have given you the explanation and the poetic devices used here so do you have any confusion any question please do share it any question anything you want to know 
up to this is it clear up to this is it clear okay okay so in my next class i would continue with the next part of the poem and i will give you all the poetic devices used here read each and every line of the poem very carefully this is very very important actually the poem is written by john keats so this is a highly romantic poem and uh, it's very famous poem a thing of beauty by john keats thank you for watching thank you very much till then goodbye